empty vessels, Lord Jesus, and we just want to be used by you, Father Lord. Father Lord, each and every person that is present, even those on live stream, Lord Jesus, you have a purpose for us, Lord. Our lives are not our own. It belongs to you, Jesus, so have your way, Father Lord. Hallelujah. everything to you, Lord. Our hearts, our minds, our bodies, our soul, we give it all to you, Lord Jesus. We trust, Lord Jesus, in you, Lord. We know that you can do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ask, think, or imagine, Lord Jesus. That's who you are. Hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. For your grace, for your mercy, Lord Jesus. You are holding us in the palm of your hands, Lord Jesus. We will not fret, we will not worry, Lord Jesus. You are taking good care of us, Lord. Hallelujah. Only your grace.
Jesus. Thank you, Father, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You are available 24-7 for us to run to your presence, Lord. We can be on the train. We can be wherever we find ourselves, Lord, and we can run to your presence, Lord. There's nothing like you, Father. We can search, but we will never, ever find anyone like you, Lord Jesus. You are truly the Messiah. You are the King, but you're also our friend and our comforter. You're our Abba Father, and you care for us, Lord Jesus.
better than you. Hallelujah. May the Lord continue to bless you. Continue to worship him. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. bless you. Welcome to our Wednesday night service. Um, I'm excited to get in today's word. I had the privilege and the honor of sharing with you guys tonight. Um, have you guys ever been struggling and you come to church and you're just pushing through? No one else knows what's going on in your lives, but you're pushing through and you're saying, someone asks you, how are you? And you say, I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm the child of God. You claim those promises, but it's tough. It's tough to, to claim it, to, to believe it, to stand on it, but you are pushing through. We're continuing on through Psalms 103, and David did just that. He had to encourage himself. So today, we want to talk about how God removes our transgressions, how God removes our sins. And as we continue through Psalm 103, forgetting not his benefits, we've come to learn that David wrote this psalm not as a prayer, because it isn't addressed to God. It's not addressing other people, so it's not towards other people. It's not a letter to other people. But David is speaking to himself. And he opens up with Psalm 103 by saying, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. And this is the verse that uh, Brittany shared a couple of weeks ago. And it made me think of, and it reminds me of, when we're going through tough seasons and we're trying to push through, we often forget to praise the Lord because we forget his benefits. And as human beings, we tend to forget all the good things. It was very easy to remember all the bad things. I can remember, I won't remember actually all the people that complimented my hair a couple of Sundays ago, but I'll remember when my sister said, yo, your hair looks a mess. And I'm like, dang, that, would, that one would hit harder. I'll forget all about the compliments. We pray and we ask God to be our provider and help us pay our bills as if he hasn't been providing month after month after month before. He's already shown himself as our provider, and yet we ask God to do it again instead of believing God to do it again. We suffer from forgetfulness, and we need a cure. <laughs> the antidote for forgetfulness is that we must preach to ourselves daily. Sometimes we must even remind ourselves of what God has already done for us. So tonight we're going to read Psalm 103, and we're going to start at verse 10. So if we can all stand. Psalm 103 is the Psalm of David, starting at verse 10. And it reads, He does not punish us for all of our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above all the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight, my God, and I just pray that you bring it to life, my Lord Jesus, that we can meditate on it and, and truly sow it in our hearts, my God, that we truly believe what your word is saying, my God, and remember it. I pray that you bless this rest of the time that we have together. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. So immediately when I started reading the scripture, I noticed that David was listing the things that God is and the listing the things that God isn't. So in verse 10, it says, he does not punish us for all of our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. 
So in verse 10, it's explaining that God is not the punisher for all of our sins, and he does not deal with us harsh, as harshly as we deserve. As we deserve. Very important. Verse 11 says, For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. So this verse is explaining how great his unfailing love is for us. If we truly grasp what this is saying, have any of us ever seen the heavens? <laughs> None of us has ever seen heaven. So imagine how high that is. Verses 12 and 13 says, He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children tender and compassionate to those who fear him. You can stand here and look to the east. You can start traveling to the east, but you're never going to get to the west. <laughs> and I really needed to, you really have to picture that because that's what it, what the, what, it's explaining what his unfailing love is. We need that imagery. God is compassionate in spite of us being undeserving. We don't deserve his compassion, church. He restrains his just wrath and has abundant store of love that never changes. Verse 13 reveals that God's fatherhood is permanent. Like my dad always tells me, I'm always going to be your father. I just look at him like, okay. But like our earthly father, God's fatherhood is permanent. When God does not treat us, God does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. When God forgives, he removes those sins. He removes those transgressions. David is reminding himself that God doesn't forgive as humans forgive. If someone hits your car in a car accident, we expect someone to pay for the damage. Someone has to pay for this. They messed up my car. When I was in Jamaica last year, I went into a gift shop, and we were walking around looking at all the gifts, and by mistake, my bag knocked down one of the magnets on the magnet display. And the worker immediately showed up to my side and was like, you have to pay for that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that's fine. But what she explained, she went on to say, if you don't pay for it, we have to pay for it. So somebody has to pay for it. And so in a worldly sense, someone always has to pay. What does it mean to have our sins removed? When you gave your heart to the Lord, God didn't forgive you because you confessed yourself as a sinner and you want to become a better person. God doesn't forgive us for our efforts not to sin, then why doesn't God repay us like we deserve? Doesn't someone always have to pay? Someone has to pay for our sins, and someone has paid for our sins. God cannot let sin go unpunished. When the Lord warned uh, when the Lord God, this is Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. But the Lord God warned him, you may freely eat from the fruit of every tree in the garden, except the tree of knowledge for good and, of good and evil. For if you eat its fruit, you are sure to, sure to die. The punishment for sin was death. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, for everyone has sinned, and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. So in this psalm, David quotes what God has spoken to Moses on Mount Sinai when he revealed himself to him, which is found in Exodus 33 and 34, and when Moses asked God to show me, Lord, show me your glory, God said, you cannot see my face, for no one may see me and live. Then he added, when 
My glory passes by, I will cover you and my hand, I will cover you with my hand and you will see my back. Afterwards, when God is making his goodness pass over Moses, he says, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgive, forgiving wickedness, rebellion and sin. And the scripture goes on to say, yet he does not leave the guilty go unpunished. So how does God maintain his love, forgive sins, and yet doesn't let the guilty go unpunished? In our mind, our human minds, that doesn't make any sense. Someone has to pay. Someone did pay. The Lord forgive us, forgives us because Jesus Christ paid the price for us on the cross. Romans chapter three, verses 23 and 24 says, for everyone has sinned, and we read this first part, we all fall short of God's glorious standard, yet in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. Jesus paid the price and he removed our transgressions, he removed our sins. When Jesus was on the cross, he had never sinned. Yet he had to become sin himself and take our place. He had to take on the sins of the world and pay the ultimate price for us. Jesus had to become a sinner so that he could make us acceptable unto him. Jesus was treated as we deserve to be treated for our sins. In Romans, the Apostle Paul says that we are made right. Doesn't say we make ourselves right. We often say, you got to get right with God. But there's nothing you need to do except repent, change the way you think about sin, and trust God. God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight, and he did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of sin. Romans chapter 3, verses 25 and 26 says, For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they believe in Jesus, that Jesus sacrificed his life shedding blood. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair, being fair, when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past, for he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in, the sight, in his sight when they believe in Jesus. Only Jesus Christ was able to afford to prepay the full extravagant price for our salvation with his perfect sacrificial death. So what does this mean for us? David had to remind himself that God doesn't punish us for all of our sins. God does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. His unfailing love towards us is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He removed our sins as far as the east is from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate towards us. We need to remind ourselves of the sacrifice that Christ made for us so that we may live freely. Out of this freedom is what David did in the beginning of the Psalms, comes praise and worship and joy. He had to tell himself to do that. Out of this freedom comes bodies willing to serve as a living sacrifice. The gift of salvation is Christ's greatest gift. This purchase wasn't made by anything you and I did or can ever do. 
We need to preach to ourselves just as David did. We need to ask God to remind us of who he is and who he will continue to be in our lives because our God never changes. And so I'll leave you with this. So faith comes from hearing, and that is hearing the good news about Christ. Church, you can't fight your battles without reading your word and reminding yourself of what God says. And reminding yourselves, if you journal, go back and see what God has done. If God has done something in your life, write it down because you're going to need that encouragement for another time. Because God is faithful and he's a God that never changes. And we need to be reminded of who God is in and through our lives. And we need to pray believing, especially for tonight, pray believing that God is who he says he is. And he's more than able to fight our battles. And we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. So let us pray.